I was just in Gaza last week. I went with an absolutely spectacular delegation organized by Code Pink. Uh, don't let their title fool you. It's a f they, I thought they were flaky when I heard Code Pink, but Medea Benjamin is, she's really a genuine credit to the legacy of the 60s. She has the right combination of humor and seriousness, discipline, and spontaneity. Uh, she's great. I, my hat's off to her. We all felt that way. It was a big delegation, over 60 people. It was supposed to be 80, but some dropped out. Uh, the cold thing was terrific. And um, it was organized inside Gaza by UNRWA, the United Nations Relief and Rehabilitation Agency. And so we end up going mostly to nurseries, hospitals, universities, clinics. It was a lot of goo goo gaga with little kids, which is nice. I don't like politics all the time. It drives me crazy. Um, so, uh, but I also, I think I had six, I counted the other day, I had six meetings with Hamas people. Um, I can't say I met the representative people. I, read, I met what I understand to be the moderate wing. Uh, the moderates were perfectly reasonable. Um, I mean, it's one of those weird things, but Hamas delivers a letter through a letter to Barack Obama via this feminist organization called Code Bink. Well, that's odd. And uh, but they were uh, they were open. Probably they were mostly open because they're desperate. They realized after the Gaza massacre that you're not going to defeat Israel by shooting firecrackers at Sederot. That's not the way to defeat them, and they have to rethink how to achieve some of their goals. Um, so, uh, that, that was a good experience. I spent probably all told around seven hours, maybe even more, talking to Hamas officials, Hamas future diplomats. Um, and now, it was clear from there that uh, the thing that's killing them is the siege. Everybody who you talk to, the siege is not an abstraction. The siege means no cement to rebuild. The siege means no medicine if you're dying of cancer. The siege means it's concrete for people there. And the goal has to be now, the short-term goal, has to be to lift the siege. And I think it can be won. Uh, I'm working now with people and organizing a mass demonstration. Hopefully about 5,000 people from around the world will come to Gaza through Egypt and are going to walk through that Eretz checkpoint, which separates Israel on the Isra excuse me, which separates Gaza on the Israeli side from the world. And we, 5,000, are going to be at the front. I'm hoping, you know, it's still in the very early stages, I want to get the honorary Grand Marshals to be uh, Nelson Mandela, Jimmy Carter, and Noam Chomsky. I think that's possible. Um, but then it's all going to be the, depending on you people, including this fellow here who's passing out on me. You're, you're going to be, uh, you're going to be coming. I don't care if you're in a wheelchair and you're asleep. You're going to be there. You know. Convince my parents, they're like, oh, you're going to Gaza, you're going to get shot. No, like, no, you're not. That's the whole yeah. point. If we're at the front, they're not going to shoot. Yeah. And all we need is about 5,000 at the front. And then we'll have a half million Gazans behind us. Uh, I don't think Israel can stop it. Uh, because well, we're going to be saying something very simple. The message couldn't be clearer. All we're doing is enforcing the law. According to uh, all human rights organizations, the siege of Gaza is illegal. We are not breaking the law. We are doing what the people in the civil rights movement in the South did. They said the Supreme Court said segregation is illegal. We are not breaking the law. We are enforcing the law. It's Israel that's breaking the law. And that's a message which I think people can understand. This is the law, just like Brown versus Board of Education was the law. And 
sometimes they had to bring in federal troops in order to in, in in order to enforce the law and we're going to bring in our troops the international peace brigades that's our troops we're doing just what the federal government did when the local authorities don't want to enforce the law when israel wants to impose not set well it's a form of segregation they're imposing apartheid uh, then we have to bring in people from the outside in order to enforce the law now we're not going to bring in armed federal marshals we're going to bring in you folks, including this guy here. Yeah. Well, the way we want to do it is uh, we want one to two people from every college. And you will do, the, and you will have do a fundraiser. Because the whole thing is we want to mobilize people. And it's not just the 5,000 who go. It's your school, your classmates watching on the web that night because we'll get Al Jazeera to broadcast it live whether Israel shoots but we want all of your co-students to have a stake in it so they will nominate the person you will not self-nominate they will nominate who goes and then there'll be a fundraiser to pay it will require raising between from the student body, raising between 1500 for one student or 3000 for two. Um, but we don't want you to pay for it out of your pocket. Because the whole idea is to get everyone to contribute $10 here, 15 and then they will want to watch to see what happens. Uh, so uh, the whole strategy is to get on that day we cross, attempt to cross the border to have people watching on their on the web is Israel going to shoot and I think if we can get all of your students from each school who nominated you and who paid for you to be watching the web I don't think Israel can shoot you know what when we do this I should go live on SITCAM and <laughs> yeah. broadcast it there live yeah. and it would be well you know we need um, since we're talking about logistics yeah. We need people, I don't know about the web, I don't know anything about it, I don't. We need people like you to talk about how you do things live and how we're going to broadcast it. Uh, I don't know about it, but we need, you know, there are a hundred different committees that have to be set up. And one is, you know, a committee on uh, internet communication. Uh, how to use the Facebook to organize it, and on that one night, how to get maximum exposure on the web so everybody is watching you know uh, but the most important thing is it has to really be democratic and not just democratic for forms sake but in terms of achieving our goal the more people who feel invested in what happened the more likely Israel will feel deterred if it knows that CSUN there are 300 students who are right now either in front of their computer or in some room together and watching either on their computer screen or some giant screen they're watching live from Eretz checkpoint as this march begins will Israel shoot that will be the key to whether it succeeds or not that's the key more exposure the more pressure on Israel it can't shoot you know uh, that's how I see it and I, I think it's winnable I've talked to a lot of people about it I think it's an idea whose time has come people recognize the blockade is illegal and there are enough people here who are really you know the famous line by the civil rights activist Fannie Lou Hamer we're sick and tired of being sick and tired and people are really sick and tired of what Israel is getting away with now you don't get to starve people to death now you don't have that right